Hey guys, it's Ray over at Sahara Coins. Uh, we're gonna be talking about a lot of coins this month and really digging into the history of them. Uh, make sure you look out the playlist, check out all the videos so you don't miss anything. This is gonna be some great information. Have a good one. Minted in 1943, the steel cent was struck in steel due to wartime shortages of copper and used the same design as the Victor David Brenner for the 1909 copper Lincoln cent. During World War II, the United States Mint researched ways to limit dependence on copper to meet conservation goals on copper usage. After trying out metals and even going as far as attempting plastic to replace what was currently bronze alloy, the one cent was eventually struck from zinc coated steel. Steel cents were struck at the Philadelphia, Denver, and San Francisco Mint, and just like the bronze cents, the Denver and San Francisco Mint coins show the mint mark just below the date. In 1944, after a public outcry due to the rusting and other design issues, the United States Mint developed processes where salvaged brass shell casings were augmented with pure copper to produce an alloy close to the earlier 1942 cents composition. This was used for 1944 through 1946 dated cents. Steel cent fun fact. The steel cent's the only regular issue U.S. coin that can be picked up with a magnet. The steel cent's also the only U.S. minted coin minted for circulation that does not contain copper. The U.S. Mint from mid-1942 to 1945 produced war nickels. The coins were manufactured from 56% copper, 35% silver, and 9% manganese. These allowed for the saved nickels to be shifted to the industrial production of military supplies during World War II. Each war nickel contained 0.0563 troy ounces of silver. With today's silver spot at 1858, the war nickel silver value is roughly $1.04. When looking for war nickels, you'll look for a few things. One, the date. Two, the large mint marks over the dome of Monticello. P, D, and S will all be above the dome. The Morgan silver dollar was minted from 1878 to 1904, and again in 1921. In 1904, silver bullion became scarce and minting stopped. But in 1921, it was minted for another year. Some people ask why. It could partly be due to the fact that during the First World War, in 1918, the Treasury melted down over 270 million silver dollars for their silver content. It was not only the Treasury, the Morgan being 90% silver and weighing in at 26.73 grams, anyone needing a bit of silver melted down as many Morgans as they felt they needed for uses from silver teapot handles to spoons. It wasn't until their value as a coin was realized to be worth more than the base metal that people stopped melting them. That did not stop the treasury though. When silver prices soared, the treasury would still drag out the bags of Morgans, melted them down for more bullion. And when the economy went the other direction, silver would be made into coins again. In this way, the government could protect its assets and control silver prices at the same time. It's speculated that the only design the mint had ready in 1921 was the Morgan dollar, so more were minted. Looking at a 1921 Morgan dollar, you'll find small differences in detail, like the face and the eagle. It is said that this is due to the advancement in die creation. Cowboys in the Old West used to drop silver dollars into their canteens to preserve water on long trips. The Double Eagle Gold Coin is a $20 gold coin minted by the U.S. Mint. The first Double Eagle was minted in 1849, which coincided with the California Gold Rush. Two proof coins were minted that year. One resides in the Smithsonian, and the other was given to the Treasury Secretary, William Meredith, and was later sold in an estate sale. The present location of that coin still remains unknown. In 1850, regular production began and continued until 1933 when the official price of gold was changed to $35 an ounce by the Gold Reserve Act. The double eagles are made of 90% gold, 10% copper, and have a pure gold weight of .9675 of an ounce. Prior to 1850, $10 was the largest denomination of all U.S. coinage. In 1933, President Roosevelt stopped the coinage of gold and made it illegal to own the metal with an executive order. Although coin collectors could retain their pieces with one exception, no 1933 double eagles could be owned since none were ever legally released. Some were stolen from the government and over the years several were recovered. In the summer of 2002, a 1933 double eagle was auctioned off for a cool $7,590,020. This is a very unique piece as it's the only 1933 double eagle that the U.S. government has deemed legal for its citizens to own. Double Eagle Fun Fact 
The St. Gaudens was originally meant to be minted in high relief, but the process took too much time and the amount of relief was not practical for the use in banks. Here at Sahara Coins, we use a thermoscientific spectrometer when you bring in your gold jewelry, gold coins, or anything that you think might be gold. Uh, what we usually do is we'll first take a look at it uh, and we'll weigh it out. I'm gonna skip the weighing part for video's sake here. Uh, what I do wanna show you is how the spectrometer works. Um, it's really important that when you go to sell your gold jewelry, if it's something nice that you don't want ruined, uh, that you don't let somebody do the acid test because what's gonna happen is they're gonna scratch a chunk off your jewelry. If you're not happy with the price, you're gonna be handed back jewelry that's damaged. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how this works. What we would do if you brought in, say, a bezel like this one, uh, we would go ahead and put it in our spectrometer over here. Once we run the test on it, uh, you'll see it gives us everything. It shows this one is about 13 carats. Uh, it does show you that there's gold, a little bit of silver, and some copper with a little bit of zinc in this piece. Uh, but what we're really looking at here is the carat weight. Uh, and that's what we're gonna base the value of the gold on. 14 carat is about 58% pure, so that gives you an idea of what your, what your gold would be worth. Uh, this one is legitimately 13 carats. Uh, something that happens sometimes is we get customers who bring in coins or jewelry uh, that may not be what they think it is. This is a prime example. Uh, we had a customer, a very good customer of ours, buy this coin here for $700. It's a great deal for one ounce of gold, if it's one ounce of gold. So we'll go ahead and test this and we'll see what it is. Well, this coin is nickel, copper, zinc and geranium. There is no gold in this coin. So this $700 coin we just discovered is worth 35 cents. Uh, this is one of those moments where the spectrometer will really prove it's valuable to you, is that you come in with these things, uh, we test them, we let you know what they're worth, and we don't do it by damaging your items. So feel free, come on down, let us test your stuff for you, we'll let you know if it's real. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Uh, if you liked it, make sure you hit like, uh, comment on the video if you have any questions for me or you just have something you want to say and share the video everywhere you can. We really appreciate that and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything.